Bro, if you get stuck in a fence, that is creepy. So let's grab a blanket, turn off your lights. For scary stories that happened near a fence. I waved back at a man. Now I think he wants to hurt me. Every day I walk home from school with my friend because she lives only a little bit away from me. So our routes line up. At the start of the school year, we noticed there was a man usually looking at us from his window while we walked home from school. I found it a little weird, but ultimately didn't think too much about the whole situation. A few weeks ago, after the heat of summer died down a bit, he started sitting out on his porch while we were walking by. Usually, he would just smile at us. Sometimes, I smiled back, but I usually just ignored him. One day, as I was walking by his house, he waved to me where he was sitting. I stopped and waved back at him and told him to have a nice afternoon as I walked past him. It, it felt a little weird because he didn't reply, but eventually I forgot about the whole thing. Once when my mom was at work and I was alone at our house, I noticed him walking past my house several times through my window. I felt very creeped out and uncomfortable. I considered talking to my parents about it just in case, but I ultimately convinced myself he wasn't doing anything wrong, right? So it didn't really matter. Yesterday, I walked home from school alone because I stayed behind with some other kids outside the school for a few hours since we had art club that day, and I didn't want to walk home just to have to come back fairly soon afterwards. I just bought myself a nice pair of wired headphones for a few weeks. Money. I've been saving up for a long time since I don't have a job. I was playing them over one ear as I was walking home then. On the way home, there was a public lot with a stable on it, and I like to cut through it to get into my yard as quick as I can, rather than walking around the whole entire property. Sometimes, people like to hang around it to meet up, but there wasn't anyone on it that I could see this time. Now, as I rounded a corner on the stable, someone grabbed the back of my shirt. From the way they were grabbing it, I could see part of their hand. I jerked forward and they grabbed the top part of my headphones. The wire was at the bottom part of my neck and it got stuck for a moment. And I remember feeling like I couldn't get away from something very bad and that something horrible was going to happen. The wire eventually snapped and I took off running as fast as I could, screaming. They let go of my shirt and I hopped the half length fence to our property and I ran as fast as I could onto the sidewalk in front of my house because I was so worried that I would take long on the lock if they were following me. By the time I actually got to the sidewalk point, I was crying and I felt like I was going to collapse because I was so scared. When I looked over my shoulder, I couldn't see anyone there, but I kept running until I reached my friend's house in case whoever was there was still around. When I got there, I was in tears and it took a bit to explain the situation because they couldn't understand me. I tried calling my mother, but she wouldn't pick up the phone. My friend's mom called the police and they came to check things out. There was nobody at the stables, and they told me that it was most likely some kid trying to mess around, but they escorted me home to where my mother was waiting for me anyways. I didn't tell them about the old man because I was worried they would think I was crazy, considering he hadn't technically done anything, and there's something in my mind that keeps telling me that it was him who grabbed me at the stables. When I was walking home from school today, I brought a screwdriver with me just in case I needed to defend myself to that old man. I also had my friend with me this time. My mother offered to pick me up from school, but I was worried that if I show how the encounter had affected me, it would just make everything worse. I had also avoided the stables, and my friend made sure I made it to the door. The guy on his porch wasn't there today, and I'm still not fully sure if it's him or not. I feel terrible that my headphones broke, but I can't help but wonder what would have happened if they didn't. I'll update if anything else happens. I'm using a spare account in case any personal details not in this post can be found on my main account. Masked paper bag person surveils my husband and I. So, this only happened yesterday and it's been driving me absolutely crazy. It's not as wild as the other stories on here, but it's by far one of the creepiest things that's ever happened to me. 
So my husband and I are walking home from having a beer at the local pub around 6 p.m. at night. Now, in terms of setting the scene, we live in a small New Zealand town population around 2,000 people, and that's a real mixed bag in terms of the residences here. Older folk, meth heads, low income, but increasingly commuters from our capital city have been selling here. We fall into the latter category. It's springtime here, so it was still plenty light, and we were just chatting as we walked the 10 minutes or so home. About three minutes into our walk, at the first intersection on our walk, I spot a cat sitting on the fence of one of the corner houses on the other side of the street from us. I say, meow, <laughs> and it meows back. It then starts stalking a bird, so my husband and I continued watching this house, the cat, really, as we walk past it. Suddenly, a person with a brown paper bag mask on their head kind of stumbles out of the door of this house into the yard area. Their mannerisms and how they're moving are so strange, but not what I'd associate with just being drunk. The house itself seems completely dead, so there is no party going on or anything like that. The person then turns to us and makes eye contact. Well, the eye holes in the mask are staring at us and then slowly start backing away to the front door, alcove of the house and disappear from view into the alcove. We've been slowly walking this whole time. And at this point, I have literal goosebumps and an intense sense of dread over me. When I write it down, it sounds so, so silly, but there was just something so creepy about this person. We were still looking as we walk past the house, and the brown paper bag stays slowly emerges from the alcove once again, watching us above disappearing from view again. As we walk and get further and further away, we keep turning around to look at it, and the same thing happens over and over and over again nothing and then slowly but surely the paper bag face emerges out to watch us once again this continues until we were at the end of the street about 350 meters and rounded the corner of the site it still makes my skin crawl thinking about it my husband laughed and said it was probably just some kid getting ready for halloween or messing with us and you know he's probably right but i i had to keep turning around to watch my back the rest of the walk home because I was so creeped out. Man behind the fence. A couple of days ago, I was sleeping over at my friend Alice's house because I was leaving to go to Texas in a week and we just decided to hang out and play games. Now, she lives on a house that floats on a lake. Around 1230, we bike to a really cool park 30 minutes away. This wasn't an ordinary park though. It was an old gas facility repurposed into a sculpture part of sorts. All the pipes were colored and stuff. Most of the gas facility was open for the public. There was one fenced off area that was next to the park. It was extremely hard to get over that fence because it was covered in barbed wire. The areas were also blocked off so there was no real way in unless you cut the fence. While at the park, I was talking to Alice about how nice the photos I could take in there would be. I am an amateur photographer, so I was super set on taking some cool pics and shit. During the day, this park is extremely crowded, so we knew we couldn't get in during the daytime. That's why we planned on going during the night. Later that night, after watching TV and playing some games, we decided to take a walk around the lake and end up at the park when we were done. During the four hour walk, I stopped to take a good bit of photos. And by the time we got in there, it was three in the morning. We had walked into the park. We walked on the top of a hill right next to the fenced off areas. As we scoped out how we were going to get inside, we saw a flashlight turn on inside of the fenced off areas. It was pointed right at us for a second and then it disappeared. We walked down the hill towards the fence. We followed him around the perimeter, waiting for him to just leave. As we just thought he was trying to explore it like we were, so we tried following him and figuring out how he got in. As we walked around the perimeter, we slowly lost track of him and where he was. We circled the whole thing once more, trying to find him. He was gone. Instead of waiting 30 more minutes to see if he was still inside there or not, we went right out to the front gate and tried squeezing our way back inside. No luck. 
We walked around it once more looking for a hole in the fence. Again, no, no luck. We went to the right front gate once more for some reason. It was now open in a way that we could get inside. We thought nothing of it. We walked right in and started looking around all over. After only about five minutes, we found our first red flag. We started hearing things in the bushes to our left side. At first, we were scared, but we later came to the conclusion that it was just an animal. After that, we started walking very, very quietly. Around seven minutes, we found a room that was extremely dark. At first, we thought it was empty. But as our eyes got used to the darkness around us, we saw the rough outline of a person. We got really scared and started making our way towards the exit. It scared us to death when we saw that there was someone blocking the exit. He was holding something, but we couldn't see what it was exactly. We think it might have been a metal pipe. So we had someone behind us. And someone in front of us, blocking our exit to get out of this place. The person behind us disappeared and we had no idea where or when we would come out. And the guy blocking the exit was then trying to circle around us to get to us. The second they were both out of view, we took our chances and sprinted to the exit hoping they wouldn't catch us while we just ran. We could hear them behind us, but we never looked back once. We were 10 feet away and we did not hear them anymore. Finally, we made it out, and once we were a safe distance away, we looked back and saw them both go back to that room we found. We still have no idea what their intentions with us were, but they were certainly nothing good. So, man behind the fence, let's not 